Good morning. Welcome back to Hanson Never Done Farms. We are in the kitchen today. I thought that I would show you guys how I process goat butter. Um, there are enough people out there that have been surprised when I say that I make goat butter. Um, they didn't know that goat butter could be made from goat milk. So I thought it would be fun to show you guys the process, how I do it. Um, this is milk from snow. Um, I get this amount in three milkings. Um, she's given me a little over three quarts each milking. I milk her um, every morning, every evening. So this is, this is the result of three milkings. Um, I put it in the fridge, in the back of the fridge, and I let it set for three to four days. And that allows the cream to rise um, and separate. Now, goat's milk is really different from cow's milk in that the molecules, the fat molecules, are much smaller and they don't separate as easily as they do in cow's milk. So it is imperative that to get the cream, um, to get a cream set on this milk, I'm going to set it in the back of the fridge and I'm not going to touch it once it's full. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to stir it. I'm not going to shake it. Um, that's, that is my process. And whenever I do that, when I do that, I find that I get a better cream set. Now, it is also important that you have a dough that has a good butter fat um, content in her milk. Snow, I have noticed, um, does not have a real high butter fat content. I'm hoping to correct that with what I feed her. Um, there are many different um, uh, theories on um, what you what you put in is what you get out basically um, I've not had a problem with the doughs that I have had so this is kind of a test for me with snow we'll get her through this year and then next year when I milk her and put her with the rest of the doughs obviously I can't you know free feed her alfalfa because then I'm free feeding you know, 13 other does, 12 other does that don't need the alfalfa and it just ends up being a waste. So next year, whenever everybody's bred and everybody's kitted and I'm milking more and feeding, you know, as much as I need to, then that'll be a good test. But she still gives enough. This is heavy cream. This is the cream that I've gotten from her in the last two pulls. Um, this will store well it smells you know there's no smell to it it'll store well for about a week a week and a half um, my general rule is this is what I do every Monday this is just my habit um, every Monday I take all the cream and make my butter for the week um, anyway so let's get started I have just a simple soup ladle um, little spoon I have found that it works the best and I'm just going to run it along the top and I'm going to skim the cream I'll bring you guys over here and let you see how heavy this cream is the cream is very very um, hers is just not as thick and I'm just not um, I don't know whether that is is just her or whether it is the fact that I have the this milk stored in the inside refrigerator and of course there's more activity with this refrigerator um, whenever we lived in Oregon what I would do is I during milking and egg laying you know summer I always put um, my milk I had a refrigerator out on the deck and milk and and eggs went out into that refrigerator and nobody ever got into it it just you know it was just used for that and so I, I noticed I always had a really good set out there now in here I am getting cream but it's just not as heavy as what I am used to getting from my doughs and so it'll be curious to see what this butter um, looks like. 
At this point, what I do is I shake up the milk because now I've taken the fat off of it that I'm going to get and I have these cute little milk jars that I have picked up at Goodwill along the way. I love, love, love them. This one says Homestead Creamery. I just love them. Anytime I find them, I pick them up. I <clears throat> have found several over the last couple years. Put a funnel in and I'm just going to fill this jar. And everybody in our household knows that if the milk is in a two quart jar, don't drink it. If the milk is in these milk jugs, it's good, it's okay to drink. I am, I am a little militant on my milk um, because I want the cream, that's why. And if people are messing with this, then they're upsetting my cream set. So anyways, that is the milk ready to be drunk. What I'm left with is what I would call some very weak cream. This isn't a real, it's just not as heavy as what I would like to see, but we're going to see what we can get out of it. If I can get, you know, even a quarter cup of butter, that's a quarter cup of butter that I don't have to buy and it's from our goats. Um, what I use is this very old fashioned Oster blender. Now, many of you may have had these in your households. I grew up with one. My mother had one of these. I have found this is the easiest way to make butter. Um, it's quick, it's efficient, it's noisy, but it gets the job done. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to pour the cream in. Get it all out of there. I don't like to waste this. I've this is too hard fought for. <laughs> Make sure you put the lid on. And now this is going to be very noisy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute you guys here and play some very nice music. How about that? shut it off here and show you because at this point I've made whipping cream. I could very easily add butter or I'm sorry I could very easily add sugar and vanilla to this and finish it off as whipping cream but I don't need whipping cream. We are making butter so let's continue. And if you look right here, you'll start seeing it start to liquefy. That is the beginning of buttermilk.
just like that, guys, we have butter. I did not skip forward. I did not do anything. And you can see the butter has formed. Now, also something that you can do, and I've, I've, I've actually done it, um, <clears throat> you can color this because this butter is going to be white. It's not going to be yellow like your cow's milk. This is going to be white. Um, in the past, what I did was I finely grated um, just a piece of a carrot and squeezed the juice into this. And that turned the butter yellow. It did not flavor the butter at all, you know, whatever. Um, but I quit doing it just because it doesn't really matter to me. But if you want your butter to be pretty, um, table butter, then for sure, color your butter if you choose. Okay, at this point, we're going to bring it over to the sink and we're going to strain it. And I just have a simple strainer in there. So there's our butter. This, guys, is your buttermilk. Biscuits, pancakes, whatever. You can drink it, whatever. But that's your buttermilk. That's your butter. I'm going to let it drain for just a second. And you can do a little flipperooski on this. I got a lot more butter out of that than I thought. I, I wouldn't doubt that I don't have a third cup of butter. Let it drain. Okay, now here's the deal. <clears throat> Goat's milk um, butter will melt at a far lower temperature than cow's milk butter will. Your regular tap water will melt this. Um, we need to rinse it. We need to rinse all the, the buttermilk out of it. It will help it store longer. Um, as much as we can, we need to work the milk out of this butter, the buttermilk. Um, so what I have is ice water. It is imperative that you use ice water at this stage um, or else you're going to lose half of what you've already done. <coughs> So I have a bowl, let me clear a sink here, and I am going to pour the butter into that bowl, and I'm going to set aside my buttermilk, and so now I have this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pour ice cold water in with my butter. And I'm going to just start gently at this point because it still is rather soft. I'm going to gently start working out some of that milk. The if you leave if, if I were to just put this in the refrigerator and use it tonight, it would be fine. I wouldn't have to do all this, but um I'm going to store this, so I want to get out as much of this milk as I can, um, or else your butter will sour. So you want to definitely work out as much as you can. We're going to drain off that. And redo. And this process, it's just... I mean, you're just adding more ice water, working it, working it, working it as much as you can. It is starting to firm up quite a bit, just being in the ice water, so I can be a little bit more, I won't say aggressive, but I can mess with it a little bit more doing it this way. And we're going to drain that off and redo it. And fill my ice water again. And 
just keep going and this is like I said this could take you know however long a few minutes it just depends on you know how much you're going to get out of it now I typically um, I don't generally get all the milk out of it because my hands get really cold um, but unless I'm using the butter that day um, I freeze my butter I wrap it in plastic wrap and cellophane whatever you call it saran wrap and um, put it in a Ziploc freezer bag and it goes in the freezer and then I can take it out and use it whenever I need it um, I try to measure um, before I freeze so I know um, what I've got on in there and I will put that in the uh, I will write that on the cellophane wrapper now you can see this is firmed up quite a bit I will write that on the cellophane wrapper um, so I know that I've got exactly so many cups or you know whatever and we just keep going and you can see it's not clouding up as quickly so we are working a lot of that milk out and I am able to be a little bit more aggressive with it you know for for all the people that say you can't make you cannot make butter out of goat's milk have we not just proved that that is not correct it does take a process you do have to let your goat's milk set for several days undisturbed and that is how you're going to get a good cream set and like I said whenever all my girls are in milk I'm doing a quart a quart and a half a week of cream um, and I'm getting about you know whatever a cup to two cups a week of of butter may not seem like a lot guys but um, if you're like me and you, you you don't do a lot of baking in the summertime um, the butter goes put up in the freezer and in the winter time I have most of my butter I don't have to buy it so and I know where it came from I know whose hands worked it So, anyways, that pretty much took care of a lot of it. So, I am going to get this finished up and I will be back in a second. Okay guys, it's done. Now I don't salt my butter. Um, other people, you know, if you choose to salt it, that is completely up to you, but I choose not to salt it. Um, what I do to prepare it is just that. I'm going to let this set in the refrigerator for a few hours um, and dry off a little bit before I put it in the freezer. I want it to firm up real good before I put it in the freezer. So anyways, that's how I make goat's milk butter on at Hanson Never Done Farms. Um, we do have about a quarter cup of buttermilk. Um, I will use that if I don't use it um, within the next two days. I'll freeze it and I'll use it later on this winter. So anyways, 
I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that I brought you some content that was interesting. Um, if you don't mind, give us a like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell, and we will catch you guys later. Thank you.